All right, guys, the struggle continues. Yeah, I'm still having an issue with the interference. Um, you know, when the car is running. Um, you know, with my new uh, Quad 6 Pro. Yeah, as soon as you turn the car on, um, it starts getting that crazy noise. Like, my noise floor goes way up. I can't hear anything. Like, what's funny, though, it's getting better, though. So all of the stuff that I've been doing with the Bandit, the noise filters, and adding capacitors and ferries everywhere is making it better. But it still has some serious issues. So, going through my electronics box here, my scrap box. I, I gotta keep all the scrap stuff for caps and whatever I'm doing. But I think I'm gonna take a capacitor and put it on my fuel filter. I, I heard some people on the forums say that it actually helps. And it makes sense because it seems like it's sort of related to the fuel pump. Um, let me show you the fuel pump I got going here. You can't really see it down here, but so that's a fuel filter. So I have double filters. It's that big long string of stuff on my frame wheel out there. Actually, the fuel pump's right there. It's under the hidden thing. So I have the, the negative going right to the frame ground. And then uh, the positive goes up. Kind of near the radio, but I have a ferret on that too. Um, so I wanted to put a positive, I wanted to put a capacitor on the, the leads. So what I was saying is I wanted to put, uh, some people have said you could you put a capacitor on the, the leads, the positive and negative leads right on the fuel pump. And it can actually help with that. But because at this point I'm just, you know, I've put a chokes on the back of the antenna. Like I've even designed chokes, like a mix 43 choke, toroid chokes, 43 and 61. These all actually help. Like all these things actually help, but there's so far there hasn't been one thing that's fixed it perfectly. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder this capacitor right here. I know this is 1.5 microfarad. Found two. And so I might make a little box, like a weatherproof box to put that in there kind of so it doesn't get... Because I'm more worried about the leads corroding through. Because it is, it is on the outside of the vehicle. It's not like an in-tank. Um, oh yeah, by the way, these Walboro... It's, it's a Walboro fuel pump, but um, they're known to be kind of noisy, so... Um, Alright, so I'm going to desolder these. I think I'm going to design like a custom box. 3D print it. And then, um, yeah, maybe fill it with some like silicone sealant. But I also want, I just want to check this, you know, at this point. I don't know if I want to invest any more money in this stuff, but... Um, yeah, they said like uh, anywhere from like one microfarad or a little bit higher, lower. Um, what's funny, the Google AI said that, so I don't know. <laughs> it's, I also kind of confirmed in different forms what people were saying, so... You know, I was reading somewhere... Um, that they said to use uh, ceramic caps were the best, the most effective at blocking high frequency. Um, so I'm going to look through this pile to see if I can find something, a, a larger ceramic, but um, yeah, I figured I, this, this is 400 volts. I've already looked at the specs in these things. It's 1.5 microfarad, 400 volts. Same thing with this one. It's just smaller. So i got to measure this, the difference. Uh, take the calipers and measure the leads. But um, yeah, I mean, I could use electrolytic cap, but I think the electrolytics... That's true. Like I said, like most of my RF amplifiers, I don't see electrolytics when it comes to that part of the, the filtering. Uh, usually it's also 400 volts because we're dealing with, the, you know, I'm dealing with amps and AC, free, high, high frequency AC. So, um, let me go through the boxes here. You know, if um, you ever watched my previous videos, um, yeah, I've run ground traps everywhere. Uh, watch my other videos, then uh, be before you comment, then you'll know I've already done ground straps, banded, done so many different things. So, um, yeah, it's only when the car's running. So, I'm going to double check, make sure this thing is software. So, I just put some leads on here. That will, that actually, what's funny is that it's almost a perfect fit on the fuel pump. 25 millimeters apart. <clears throat> so, this is actually bigger, it was bigger than I thought. It's 3300, so, or 3.3 microfarad, 400 volt. All right, so I'm in the Bronco right here. So if you didn't see my previous videos, um, yeah, I've done a lot of different things. Like I said, it's the, the Bandit. So I'm in the Bronco right now. Skip is, good. Skip is pretty good right now. So I'm running a five foot uh, fire stick to the back. So I need to, it's hard to, to tell when there's a lot of skip. I noticed that what I was saying the other day, I, I, I mean, I never really thought it was a fuel pump because I, when I let it fuel pump prime, 
I, there was already a lot of skip going on, so I couldn't pick it up. But one day I was on a, a channel that wasn't there was no skip going on it. And I could really see. I mean, I could see when I, the fuel pump was priming a little bit. Um, So I'm going to turn it on just to prime the fuel pump. Hear that? See that? Yeah, it's really hard to. It, it seems like it's kind of intermittent, but another thing too is take a look at my my transmit here. You go to a channel that's let me on. All right, all right. Audio test. Audio. I mean, I'm also getting on the speakers too. Audio. Audio. What I'm looking at is the fuel pump. The, the, the uh, fuel pump pr uh, pressure gauge right here. Audio, see? Um, yeah, weird issues. I mean, like I said, this is putting out maybe like 80 watts, maybe. But yeah, I have all kinds of interference in my speakers. I've tried grounding. All right, so here's a closer look at the capacitor. If I can see that in the frame, at a weird angle. So I have the pre-filter pump. Uh, this is a check valve. So it's a one-way valve, so it keeps fuel inside the hose here. And I'll see that works. Hopefully I don't burn out that pump. Let's see here. Alright, let's make sure it works. Alright, here the pump going. It's a good sign. To the radio on. Actually I turned it to FM because I was kind of messing with different channels. I wish it was just some quick fix, man, but it just seems like it's a lot of very different small things, you know? It's very annoying. Alright. It's almost like I need to go on a channel that doesn't have any activity so you can really see. Yeah, the other day, actually, I could see this thing. Actually, when, when the pump would go on, I could see this thing actually moving. Alright, let me know what you guys think down below. I guess I'll drive this around for the next couple days and see if it's made any difference. Alright, so I took it this for about an hour to drive today. And surprisingly, actually, I, I saw an improvement. I could hear actually a lot better. So, yeah, it wasn't the miracle cure that I wanted, but um, I was hoping for the miracle cure, cure but um, it just seemed like, you know, it's just small things, man, like chokes and ferrites and capacitors. And it's all improving the situation for sure, especially on sideband. Um, I don't really have a problem because AM is, is really loud typically in this car, so it's not, it's mainly sideband. But, um, yeah, I can actually hear uh, when, I'm, when I'm driving around now, so. Yeah, I still got a lot of a long work to do. I'm, I'm going to wrap all my fuel injection wires and, and Faraday tape. I'm going to start wrapping up all my fuel injection system and, and Faraday tape. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's been quite a headache. I said, I never knew I had a radio problem until I got in a single sideband in the car. <laughs> All right.
cool.